So a new South Park special was recently released, and you know what that means. I am so late to making a video on it that everyone's already forgotten about it. You see, this is usually the part where I try to like explain myself and why I'm so behind schedule, but honestly, I don't really have an excuse for this one. Over the last two weeks, most of my time has been spent doing, well, stuff like this. Oh fuck, Pushing dude. Pushing phantom tax. <laughs> game. He dropped, he dropped. Left. Nice. Austin's on site. Oh no, oh no, it's getting serious. Oh! Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? What just happened? However, the one benefit of my laziness is that I've been able to sit back and watch the reactions of the general public to this special, and in doing so, I have noticed some interesting patterns regarding how people are interpreting the messages here. When I first watched the trailer for this episode and saw that it seemed like they were going to be tackling woke media, going as far as to race and gender swap all of the main characters, I had a feeling I knew exactly how the response to this episode would play out. And as it turns out, I was right on the money. Primarily, in what will come as a shock to literally no one who's a fan of South Park, it seems like a lot of people kinda miss the point. Even less surprising is how many people have taken these ideas out of context and used them for their own personal gain. If you don't know why that's unsurprising, I recommend you check out the video I made about the many, many times that that exact scenario has played out during this show. So instead of taking everyone at their word and forming our opinion through tweets and YouTube videos, let's go ahead and figure it out for ourselves. Have Matt and Trey finally outed themselves as bigots who are intent on spreading their racist, homophobic, and sexist rhetoric to all of their fans by denying the importance of inclusivity in modern media? Or did they own woke Hollywood? Did they destroy Disney and Kathleen Kennedy? Was this a systematic takedown of the woke liberal agenda in our media? Was it insert more buzzwords here? Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. Well, this special answers those questions in the same way that South Park usually answers questions. It's complicated, and I know that this intro might make it seem like this entire video is going to be dissecting the politics of this special, but in reality, I'm going to be talking about every aspect of this special, most importantly, whether it was good and whether it was funny. So with the intro out of the way, let's get into it. Did South Park just declare war on Woke? So first, let's recap what exactly happened in this special, and then after, I'll go into depth about the themes and the potential messages. So the main plot follows Cartman as he sees visions of a terrifying parallel universe, one where he and everyone around him are replaced with diverse women. He believes that this is all the work of the evil Kathleen Kennedy, who demands that every character we love be ruined. But then Kathleen Kennedy says I fuck it, make it my name. If you don't know, Kathleen Kennedy is the president of Lucasfilms, which is owned by Disney, and according to a lot of anti-woke people online, she's the one to blame for all of this pandering that's being done in modern Disney movies. And even though this is the plot that has caused such a stir online, a surprisingly large amount of this special is actually dedicated to a completely unrelated plot that sees Randy attempting to fix his oven door, but coming to the realization that he doesn't actually know how to fix it. In fact, it seems as though he's forgotten how to do pretty much any handiwork along with the entirety of the white collar workforce in South Park. They're basically making the point that as technology and especially AI have made our lives easier, the average person has begun to lose these skills that they once had. It appears that nobody knows how to do shit anymore. And while that's rather unfortunate for the average person, this is great news for all the blue collar workers around town whose jobs are not threatened at all by advancements in AI or technology. These workers are in such high demand that Randy can't even get one to come fix his oven door, even as he goes to more and more extreme lengths. Back with Cartman, he seems to be slowly losing it as he is completely convinced that he's changing somehow, as he witnesses all of these visions of diverse women taking his place. God damn it, I'm not fat, I'm just shamed for my body in a world where white men decide what's beautiful! <gasps> he comes to the conclusion that these aren't just visions, they're glimpses into alternate universes. The rest of the boys are not buying it, and as Cartman is being sucked into said multiverse, they share their opinion on the trope as a whole. I swear, the multiverse is just an excuse for lazy writing. Whoa. Yeah, it's like every damn movie now. Back with Randy, he takes a page out of Cartman's playbook to see if he can finally get his oven fixed. No. There's people you can hire to do these kinds of things. Okay, listen up, Mexicans. We need you to read... The old man and the sea for us. Caprende? But instead of Mexicans, all he finds are a bunch of white collar workers offering their services in exchange for handiwork. No, I, I need some broke ass immigrants to fix my oven door. 
Oh, man, dang it. Meanwhile, one of the local handymen pull up absolutely dripped out in designer, asking for anyone that has any ability with a saw. We then switch perspectives back to the Pandaverse, which is the universe where everyone is diverse women. We had our first look at this universe during the opening scene in Cartman's Dream when they were all at the bus stop, and it made me realize just how much I love these character designs. They made sure to go all in on the diversity with each of the main boys becoming women of color. All of them look sick and have a bunch of small little details that really tie it together nicely, like Kyle's hair being tied with a green hair tie. But my favorite is definitely Kenny, which I mean, I don't think is surprising. It seems like that's the general consensus among fans, but that's for good reason because Kenny's design is just so cool. And for some reason, it just seems to fit his character the best out of any of the boys. I don't know how to describe it, but it just, it just makes sense, you know? This is kind of a tangent, but I think the funniest part of this whole special is that when these designs were shown in the teaser trailer, while all these anti-woke bros were writing scripts about how Disney got owned, the entire online fandom collectively lost their minds in excitement because this is already how they draw all of these characters anyways. I don't know, I just thought that was funny. So we see diverse Cartman ranting to all of her friends about the same visions normal Cartman is having, but then she gets sucked into the multiverse as well, being replaced with the normal Cartman. She ends up in the normal universe and she attempts to convince the boys of what happened, but once again, they're not buying it. Meanwhile, another handyman pulls up to the Home Depot absolutely pimped out and he tells the white collar workers to go away. This really pisses off Randy and the rest of them, so they decide to go to the local college and accuse it of being a scam, as well as attack it with a catapult. How are we going to break the college if the catapult is still in the box? It's okay, we called the handyman, he's going to build it for us. Back with the boys, they get called into the principal's office and we get to see PC principal address the situation with Cartman, and it goes exactly as we expect it to. I don't see a problem with it at all. And if you boys don't think Eric can be a black woman, then maybe the problem is you. The real Cartman is still losing his mind over in the Panderverse, demanding to speak with someone of authority, giving him a flashback to his time spent at the water park back in season 13. But even is there a problem here? Yeah. Then we cut to the Disney headquarters, where they're discussing their plummeting stocks when someone suggests that Kathleen Kennedy might be the issue. When they mention how she seemed different recently, someone suggests a theory. We here at Disney pandered so much that we've opened a doorway to the Panderverse. She happens to arrive at the meeting right as they're saying this, and I mean, I don't know, she looks totally normal to me. So then we cut back to the normal universe where the boys are still discussing their feelings on multiverses. Now it's just this cheap device that people use to breathe life into tired franchises. So then, Diverse Cartman comes up with a new plan to get everything sorted out by using Kyle's mom's credit card. Then, back in the Pandaverse, Cartman is at the police station. We get to see Diverse Detective Harris, and a small detail that I found hilarious about it is the fact that he's the only character in the Pandaverse that has the exact same voice as his regular counterpart, and for some reason that just makes a lot of sense to me. More honkies? What is this, a Taylor Swift concert? Then Cartman overhears that Kathleen Kennedy is looking for him, and he makes a very graceful exit. Back with Randy, he's currently in the process of leading a protest at the country club against rich people, you know, the rich people now being the handymen. At this point, the handymen are essentially billionaires, and they face off over who can buy the most social media platforms, who can go to space faster, and their plans to fight in MMA. Gee, I wonder if this could possibly be mirroring any real life events or people. Back at Disney, they use an incredibly advanced AI technology to realize that this Kathleen Kennedy must be from a different universe. They now know what they must do. Then we have to get everyone back to the right universe before it's complete pandemonium. Back with the boys, they set up their brand new gaming PC to get started on Diverse Cartman's plan when Kyle's mom notices the charges to her credit card. But because Diverse Cartman is still Cartman, she's able to convince her that it's just credit card fraud. Back in the Panderverse, Diverse Butters is singing her rendition of Butters' favorite song. Lulu, Lulu, I got some apples. She's jump scared by Cartman breaking into her room, who convinces her to join in on his plan, showing that this universe is not so different from their own. But immediately after, Kathleen Kennedy appears and Cartman makes another graceful exit. Back in the regular world, Randy gives a lecture to Shelly about the current state of the workforce. I don't want you to end up a deadbeat loser who goes to college, Shelly. Instead, go out and be taught real skills that will still be profitable in this post-AI universe. So then Cartman is eventually cornered by Kathleen Kennedy, 
who tells him that she's also in the wrong universe. Meanwhile, Diverse Cartman's plan is working exactly as she wanted it to, but what the boys don't realize is that her plan wasn't to fix the multiverse or anything, it was just to play Baldur's Gate 3. Wow, it really is Cartman. Throughout this episode, they mention Baldur's Gate 3 like a bunch of times, and it makes me laugh because this is clearly one of those times when Matt and Trey got really into a new thing, and then they just decided to include it in an episode. Like, I can just tell that they were really excited to make this joke. Also, this part was pretty hilarious because it is incredibly relatable to anyone struggling with games that don't have cross-progression. Save games don't even cross between PCs and PS5s, so why would they cross between multiple universes? So in order to gain access to the Panderverse, the Disney execs tell Randy the requirements to open the portal, which are so stupid that I honestly couldn't tell if it was a genuine attempt to make a connection or if it was making fun of the loose and contrived connections made in multiverse stuff. We need to find a place with integrity that has a broken door. Meanwhile, Cartman and Kathleen Kennedy meet at City Walk, or City Woke, I should say, to discuss what's happening. Kathleen Kennedy reveals the secrets of the Panderstone, how it was an advanced form of AI that could be used to create the same movies over and over and have them appeal to everyone. But after receiving tons of hate mail, she doubled down, using the Panderstone more and more until it became unstable and released the Cartman version of Kathleen Kennedy. Meanwhile, Randy begins his exploration into the multiverse, where they take another jab at multiverses in what was one of my favorite jokes in the whole special. Can you imagine it? An infinite number of universes with infinite combinations of pants and shirts! Back at City Woke, Cartman and Kennedy are sharing their feelings about the pandering being done, when Cartman reveals that he alone has been writing the tens of thousands of letters of hate mailed to Disney, causing them both to reveal their true motives. I wouldn't have tried to fight racism with the Panderstone if you hadn't written all those letters! I wouldn't have written all those letters if you haven't tried to fight racism with the fucking Panderstone! Meanwhile, Randy is still experiencing his wardrobe nightmare within the Panderverse. I'm wearing a Baltimore Ravens shirt now! I hate the Ravens! Oh! Oh! Now it's the Dolphins! Oh! The Chiefs! Oh, it's the Chiefs! When Cartman and Kennedy finally begin to develop some understanding of each other, discussing how their reactions to each other were what caused this cycle of pandering to worsen. And, in a rather uncharacteristic moment for Cartman, he apologizes, saying his actions left her no choice but to double down on the pandering. Kennedy also apologizes for how she's treated the franchises that so many people love, calling it lazy. And then, Cartman makes a concession that is pretty interesting and that we'll talk about more later in this video. I guess just wailing on woke stuff all the time is pretty lazy too. Just then, Randy makes it and opens up a portal for Cartman and Kennedy, allowing them to return to their universe. Kyle is still skeptical of Cartman, and that's for good reason. Kyle, I'm back! I was so wrong about Kathy Kennedy, Kyle, she's so awesome! Okay, what Cartman is this? You know, I think it's obvious that the universe has got mixed up somewhere and accidentally gave them a shaved version of the evil Cartman from Spooky Fish. You're so funny. No matter how I'm feeling, I can always count on you guys to lighten me up. You know, that's just a theory. AGAIN! No. Upon his return, Randy does everyone a favor by bringing a bunch of handymen from alternate realities, which is played like it's supposed to be some sort of commentary on billionaires, but honestly I couldn't figure it out, so I don't know. The special ends with a glimpse into another alternate universe, where the Cartman Kennedy tells her mom about her nightmare. She tells Kyle that he was in the dream, and in a choice that I still do not understand, we see that Kyle is Cartman's cereal in this universe, and he devours him happily. You know, weird vor-like implications aside, that is the end of the special. Oh yeah, I forgot about diverse Cartman. Well, she makes it back to her universe too, and they all live happily ever. Alright, now we're going to take a look at some of the underlying themes that we see throughout this episode. First, I'll talk about each plot individually, and at the end I'm going to talk about the themes that connect all of the plots. So let's start with the Randy plot, because it's probably the most obvious. It's all about how AI technology is advancing at such a rate that many of the jobs people previously referred to as educated labor are slowly being made obsolete. The attitude of Randy and the rest of the white collar workers is very resentful and angry at how seemingly unfair it is for the handymen to be making billions of dollars while they struggle to even find work. Now this is set up in a story structure that South Park uses all the time. I talked about it way back in my very first video on this channel where I called it flipping the script. 
three years later and I still don't know what it's actually called, so that name will have to do. It's one of their trademark ways of satirizing something, essentially placing those on either side of an issue in each other's place. In this case, Randy and the rest of the men take the role of your typical blue collar worker, while the blue collar workers become the wealthy businessmen. However, I think most of the message can be drawn from Randy's actions. It all started with his broken oven door, and as the story progresses, he becomes obsessed with getting a handyman to fix it. He slowly moves further and further away from his original mission, until eventually he's leading a protest against capitalism and traveling through space-time. You probably wouldn't have even remembered that this was all to fix his oven if it weren't for Sharon calling to remind us every once in a while. Randy, did you fix the oven door yet? I'm working on it! Hey, Randy, the oven door in the kitchen still isn't- I am working on it! Hey, Rand, the oven door still isn't shutting right- Yeah, I'm working on it, Sharon! Randy, I think the oven door is still having problems if you- I am working on it, Sharon! But what does any of this have to do with fixing an oven door? How did we even get here? Well, Randy's attitude is spelled out for us early on when he has a conversation with Siri. Siri gives him all of the information he would need on how to fix the oven door, he just doesn't want to do it. So instead, he inadvertently goes to much further lengths trying to get someone else to do it, when he could have just done it himself from the beginning. It reminds me a lot of how Sheila and the moms act in Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. They go to all these extreme lengths to protect their children from TV when they could have just talked to them from the beginning. In both of these cases, their behavior is a reflection of their unwillingness to take any personal responsibility. But why specifically is Randy acting like this? Well, we'll talk about it more when we discuss the connecting themes later, but for now, let's talk about the pandering. So what does this episode really have to say about woke culture, and do they really own Disney as hard as these YouTubers would lead you to believe? Well, there definitely is a lot of dogging on the pandering being done in media. I mean, by replacing every single character in the show with diverse women, they're already making fun of the concept, showing how little sense it makes to randomly give characters a new race and gender, especially in a show like South Park. A lot of the critique of the concept comes directly from Kyle and Stan, who argue with PC Principal about why it it makes no sense. What's wrong is it doesn't make any sense. They make an important distinction after PC Principal brings up Miles Morales, though. No, Miles Morales is sweet. That's a whole constructed thing with its own character and narrative, and this is just taking Cartman, same old Cartman, and putting a black woman in it. See, this scene explains the core of the episode's criticism of woke pandering. They're not making fun of race and gender swapping as a whole, but rather the way that it's done. The Miles Morales thing is a perfect example since Miles Morales isn't just Spider-Man, he's an original take on Spider-Man. It makes sense to have him be a different race because he's really his own separate thing. On the opposite side, we have movies like The Little Mermaid remake, which is exactly the type of representation that the show is making fun of. Making Ariel black without changing anything else is not actual representation, because representation is about much more than just skin color, it's about identity and culture. By just changing her skin color, you might as well have just released the original and reanimated Ariel to have darker skin. Really, it's insulting to those that it's attempting to represent. It's just a blatant attempt at pandering to them, covered with a thin veil of surface level representation. If they really cared about making progress for these underrepresented groups, they would be putting their effort into creating high quality original characters and IPs that have diverse characters. I mean, just look at Black Panther. It was one of the highest grossing movies of all time, and it did way more for black representation than any of these movies ever will. The show's biggest gripe with this kind of race swapping is that it's just lazy. It's an attempt to profit off of marginalized groups without having to do anything besides casting an actress of a different race. So of course people are going to be upset, since so many people care so deeply about these characters and franchises. To have them all change so unnecessarily can be frustrating. I'm sorry I was so reckless with the things that you love. It was just lazy. So did South Park dunk on Disney and their woke pandering like all these dudes say? Well, to a degree, yes. But what these people seem to be forgetting is that this is South Park. And any time that you think the show is fully on your side, they're probably making fun of you too. And of course, this special is no exception. When Cartman and Kennedy sit down to discuss their roles in all of this, she reveals that the reason they have been pandering so hard is because of all the hate they're receiving. 
so much racist and sexist hate that she felt the need to continue pandering in an attempt to counteract this hate. Ugly letters from racists who couldn't stand that some of the Panderstone's rehashes had diverse women characters in the lead. Then Cartman reveals that he has been writing all of the letters. Well, I'm sorry I wrote all those letters. They probably was a bit much. Oh, I got like 10,000 letters a day. I was doing more like 12 to 13,000, especially after the new Indiana Jones came out. And it brings them both to a realization. I reacted to you, and you reacted to me. And I guess we created each other. Each of them are a product of the other. They use Cartman to represent the people who are genuinely hateful towards these groups, the people who will label any sort of attempt at representing a group as pandering trash, people who are actually bigoted. Because these people are so vocal in their complaints, they overrepresent themselves and Disney doubles down in an attempt to fight back. This leads to more hate, which leads to Disney tripling down, and so on and so forth in a feedback loop that just makes everything worse. So now we can finally return to that line that Cartman said earlier. I guess just wailing on woke stuff all the time is pretty lazy too. In this case, they're pretty much admitting that even though there are valid things to critique within the woke movement, those people out there who spend all their time talking about how terrible woke culture is are doing pretty much the exact same thing as Disney. These people ripping on wokeness all the time are also creating incredibly lazy content, uploading the exact same video every day, making the exact same jokes that everyone else has already made, profiting by pandering to the anti-woke crowd. Instead of presenting any valid criticisms of woke culture, they all just talk about how wokeness is coming for everything you love, They'll spend half the video reading an article about how they're making Tinkerbell black and at the end they'll talk about how it's just ridiculous. This is the woke liberal agenda. It's so hypocritical. Oh my god, I have to pick my pronouns in a video game now. What's next? Shovel! Your dog shit! F***ing crap! Ideology! Into everything! Every single s It's all just lazy, pandering garbage that anyone could make. Anyone could buy a microphone and build a brand off of ripping into woke stuff all day. So yes, South Park did make fun of Disney and the woke culture, but they also made fun of all of you. And I don't know if it's just me, but I'm not seeing any of you talk about that part in your videos. This came out last night. I have not watched it in its entirety. I've seen a bunch of clips out there. I have not watched it in its entirety. I have not watched it in its entirety. <laughs> So now that we've established how the show feels about all of these topics, what was the point of it all? Well, the theme that connects everything together, that's the underlying cause of all these different plot points, is actually super simple. Laziness. Everything they criticize throughout this special has a root cause in laziness. From technology and AI making all of us lazy, to Randy's lazy attitude causing him to look for any way to fix the toilet besides learning how to fix it himself, to the laziness of Disney just race swapping their characters instead of creating compelling original characters, to the lazy cash grab content of the dudes that talk about wokeness all day, and even the jokes about the multiverse being an excuse for lazy writing. It's all just laziness. So really, even though the online reaction to this episode may lead you to believe that it's all about taking down woke time, culture, it's, it's really not. At its core, this special was a message to everyone out there. Whether you support every single diverse remake Disney pumps out or you complain non-stop about them, whether you don't know how to fix anything or you know how to fix everything, if you're a writer out there who's about to explain away a plot hole with a multiverse, just please, for everyone's sake, Stop being so lazy. All my fellas. All my fellas. All, all my fellas. All my fellas. All my fellas. You know, all around, I thought the special was pretty great. There were a ton of funny moments, relevant social commentary, good messages, and some awesome new character art. I ended up enjoying it a lot, and I'm excited for the next special they release before the end of the year. Comparing it to the other specials, I'd say it was pretty significantly better than the streaming wars, but still not that close to the quality of post-COVID. Let's go!